There was no signs, no warning or nothing. Out of the clear blue, my legs started shaking. He did not like what he was told. You're not going to be able to stand up. You're going to have trouble moving or walking. You'll obviously be wheelchair bound. What's the root of it? You know, the guy was a fireman. It may have been the fire he fought in 86. It was a chemical fire. Who knows? I have this disease. It's incurable. But, you know, it ain't going to beat me. Welcome to The Incurables. I'm Don Wildman. Some people spend their whole lives serving their community with a generous spirit, always putting other people first. Joe Ferrara was first and foremost a family man. Kind-hearted, physically robust, and always ready to come to the aid of a stranger, Joe found the perfect job, serving 26 years as a firefighter in Yonkers, New York. But when Joe started to stumble and had a hard time climbing stairs, his family knew something was terribly wrong. Told he had a rare and incurable muscular disease that could cause him to waste away, he suddenly needed the support of his family and friends and the collective expertise of a battery of healers. With nothing to lose, Joe Ferrara hit his illness on all sides and stopped a crippling disease in its tracks. When you hear somebody you love has something incurable, your first reaction is one of, oh my God. Right away, you're thinking ahead and, and oh, what if you, you can't walk anymore? And then I picture my father like in a wheelchair and he can't do this and he, and he can't do that. And that, I think, is, was more upsetting than anything else. A doctor can't say, with this disease, five months, six months, seven months, they don't know. They, they don't even know where it comes from, what causes it. It's frightening. It's very frightening. It's scary. Based on the medications that are currently used and based on the protocols that doctors currently have, they really didn't have much hope for Joe. I came to face the reality. I have it, okay. It's not curable, okay. What can we do? Joe Ferrara was born and raised in Yonkers, New York. With three sisters, he says, he learned not to be spoiled. At 15, Joe was in school and working two jobs to help support his family. But he still found time to star on his high school baseball team. After a stint in the Air Force, Joe married Elaine Dopolito, and the couple started a family of their own. When his son was a year old, Joe joined the Yonkers Fire Department. The tight-knit bonds he formed over those next 26 years still endure. You know, camaraderie is there. It's a family. It's not a nine to five job where you want to get away from it. Great years, great job, great bunch of cats. We had seen him on the news a few times fighting fires. He also was on the front page of a newspaper, out cold, oxygen mask on. You talk about a pillar of strength. He was that pillar of strength for us. He is caring and giving. He loves his family a lot. Hard working all his life, you know, he didn't have a lot from the stories I hear growing up, so he always wanted to do what he didn't have for everybody. So, just, you know, good guy. Joe is a, is a real winner. I mean, he is, there's something about him that the minute you meet him, you're, you're pulling, pulling for him. When Joe started showing signs of weakness, his family was troubled. My legs felt kind of funny, and I noticed going up the steps that my legs would quiver. And I grabbed the hand reeling and I stopped pulling myself up. Struggling to get upstairs and unsteady on his feet, Joe knew something was wrong. So he finally went to the doctor and they did blood work. Joe's doctor ran a CPK test, which looks for the buildup of an enzyme known as creatine kinase. And it came back that the counts were high. That was an indication that Something's going on with the legs. A biopsy confirmed Joe had inclusion body myositis, a rare and incurable muscular disease. It is a disease that affects all the muscles in your body. It, it affects, I mean, we're talking about 
lungs, heart, throat, uh, you know, everything. Eventually, it could affect your walking, you could be in a wheelchair, it could affect your throat muscles. So that was, you know, it was very hard. We both cried like babies. When I was diagnosed with this, it, it, it hit me a ton of bricks. Learning he had a disease that might immobilize him came as a terrible shock. One night I was upstairs and he was down here and I heard him crying. It was very upsetting to me to hear it because I guess he's picturing all these things and he would talk about wheelchairs and, and this and that and that was the, the lowest I've seen. I think the scary thing for all of us, and particularly him, is, okay, what's the next thing that's going to happen? You know, I go from a cane to a walker to a wheelchair. With no known cure for IBM, Joe's future looked bleak. Worst case scenario is you become a vegetable. Basically, they said you've got, you know, three to six months, maybe nine months, and the last of it's going to be you know, really tough, really terrible. You know, you're not going to be able to stand up. You're going to have trouble moving or walking. You'll obviously be wheelchair bound. What scared me was always in the back of my mind is I don't want to be a vegetable. You know, I don't want to lay in bed with tubes in me, you know. Hey, pull the plug. Joe Ferrara was diagnosed with an incurable disease. With no standard treatments for inclusion body myositis, Joe's doctors tried a combination of prednisone and an intravenous immunoglobulin drip. Joe spent four days in the hospital. I wasn't scared in the hospital. The only thing I was scared of was my mind would think somewhere down the road I'm going to wind up where I'm going to lose all functions of my muscles. That's what scares me. All I kept saying was, am I going to be in a wheelchair? And she said, Joe, I can't answer that. Well, that was like taking a knife and sticking it in him. While his IV treatments offered some relief, they were only a short-term solution. Joe and his family desperately began to search for other options. When he first was diagnosed, I went right on the computer and I'm, I'm researching, and it's, it's scary to read. Sometimes the more you read, the worse it is. Right away, you're picturing things like, oh, in the future is my dad not gonna be able to walk, is he gonna be in a wheelchair? My family, Italians from New York, are very thick-headed and stubborn, and they're very live and die by what their doctor says. Give me a pill, get rid of the pain, and that was me. I think for the first time when he got this diagnosis, it opened him up to, well, what are the other possibilities? Joe was introduced to Bear Walker, a holistic practitioner who comes from a long line of Native American healers. My grandfather is full blood native. My grandfather is Anishinaabe. I grew up on the reservation. Actually, I go back many generations of the Bear Clan, and the Bear Clan are medicine people. We've done medicine in some form for as long as my family can possibly remember. Bear Walker's approach to alternative healing ranges from the use of traditional herbs to the most advanced computer-based diagnostic tools. He has this little machine and he sticks a probe in your hand. With the other probe, he touches certain parts of your body. And it registers how your liver is, your kidneys, your spleen, everything that's internal in your body. Using an advanced diagnostic computer, Bear was able to test Joe's bodily systems to identify deficiencies and to monitor the effectiveness of therapies. This computer evaluates through GSR indicators. 30 different points in your body which tells us how that system of the body works. And so this computer will tell me exactly where he's at when I first saw him. I can get metal and chemical levels on it. I can get functions of the different systems of the body. And then we can see by using certain therapies, is he improving or not improving? Bayer looked to treat Joe's condition at the cellular level. IBM means that the mitochondria inside the cell, the little energy producing part of the cell, that produces ATP is not doing its job correctly. And the marker on that is creatine kinase. Creatine kinase tells us that the body is, is not clearing out the metabolic waste product of exercise. 